Hey guys, Mr. Candy back with another video, and this one's going to be about metabolism, uh, the way the body breaks down and releases energy. So we're going to talk about homeostatic processes and energy requirements. Now when we talk about this, we talk about thermoregulation, how an animal maintains an internal temperature within a tolerable range and within a range that can survive. Now there are basically two ways to maintain thermal regulation. You can be an endotherm or have endothermic regulation, which means that your body produces its own heat and controls its own body temperature. The advantage of this is that these animals can live in any environment, such as this walrus down here at the bottom of the screen, or you are endothermic as well. Uh, ectothermic is the other way, and that means it relies on the environment to regulate and maintain its body temperature, such as the snake basking in the sun in the bottom picture. Now, the advantage to this is that it actually requires less energy of the organism's part to be an ectotherm than it does an endotherm. So there are advantages to both techniques. Now, when we talk about energy requirements, we're really talking about the metabolic rate of an organism. The metabolic rate, the formal definition is the sum of all the energy used in biochemical reactions over a given in time interval. That means all the energy that's used to breathe, to move, to, to, to maintain, whatever it is, that's your metabolic rate. Now, metabolic rate can be affected by lots of things, and I have four things listed. It can be affected by the amount of heat you loss, the amount of oxygen consumed, the amount of carbon dioxide produced, uh, the rate of food consumed. We can measure metabolism in all these different ways. Now, when we talk about metabolism, though, there's basically two minimum metabolic rates that we talk about. Basal metabolic rate, and this is the minimum metabolic rate of an endotherm. This will be on an empty stomach, not experiencing stress, they're in a comfortable range, and you figure out what their metabolic rate is. How do you do this? By measuring one of the things I mentioned on the other page. Uh, how much oxygen they're producing, their heart rate, etc. Or you can use a standard metabolic rate, and this is usually used with ectotherms because realize they don't maintain their own body temperature, but it's still the same characteristics. Empty stomach, they're not in a stressful situation, but they do have to be at a specific temperature to get the standard metabolic rate. But you can, these both basically measure the same thing, but you may see a little bit different terms depending on if you're endotherm or ectotherm. Now, when we talk about influences on metabolic rate, there are six over here listed. You know, the age affects your metabolic rate. Um, usually it slows down the older you get. The sex affects your metabolic rate. Usually males have a higher metabolic rate. Size, on average, usually... A smaller animal is going to have a higher metabolic rate. Um, activity, you know, what are they doing? Temperature, nutrition, the amount of food they eat, etc. I've got two graphs over here, and it shows you one shows you uh, the basal metabolic rate per body mass of the animal, um, and then the other graph shows you basically a percentage of the animal's mass that is used in their basal metabolic rate. As you can see in this one here, the mouse has more of its body mass is, is going toward maintaining its metabolic rate than an elephant, even though an elephant has more. Uh, so you can see how the smaller animal usually has a higher metabolic rate, uh, not only because of its size, but because of the activity and what it has to do to, to avoid predators. Now, the last thing is, what if environmental conditions are not very are, are very severe? What does an animal do? Well, it can, it can try to combat them, or it can do what's called a torpor, which is a physiological state of decreased activity. Now, we might think of something like hibernation. That's an example of an extended torpor. Um, bears, we often think of hibernating, right? But they slow their metabolic rate. If you slow your metabolic rate, you, you, you reduce the amount of energy that you need. So you make it easier to survive during severe and harsh conditions. Plants and animals in the desert do what's called estivation, in which they uh, go through a short period of torpor. During the daytime when it's hot, they slow their metabolic rate down, and they become active at night when it's not as, as hot or as warm. So this is just examples of your um, metabolism. I hope that helps you, and I will talk to you very, very soon.